How's it going guys? Copy here. Today I wanted to go over the Gemma build that I was using in order to re-hit damage cap uh, after the nerfs that she got from last league. Um, all I can say for this is basically the gear definitely got more expensive. Um, the requirements for what we lost, um, losing precise cast on crit, most importantly, was like a 600% damage multiplier. So um, we had a lot of room to make up for that. Um, the version that I made um, ended up, you know, originally using, I just came on here with Imperial Might. I ended up with a crafted helmet, all these things. But um, with um, this is a version where you could get in here cheaper. But this is still not going to be a cheap build by any sense of the word. Like last league, we were hitting damage cap, you know, with 2,500 FE maybe. Um, this league, you're going to need significantly more, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure the wands that I'm using alone uh, are already more than 2,500 FE. Um, so because we're not using precise cast and crit, we are using wands. So you are basically doing the same thing as before, where you are going for as much affliction effect as possible as well as your additional damage to Frozen, um, plus six on each wand, um, or plus five, I guess, in this case. Uh, T-Zero Affliction Effect on every single piece of gear. Um, it's kind of what you're aiming for. And then, um, as you can see, T-Zero Affliction Effect on everything. And then, um, yeah, and then for the gloves, you just want Reap. Um, if you can get plus one, that's nice, but I was doing some armor stacking stuff with Imperial Might. So I will showcase that version here in a minute um, for your chest and for your helmet if you're trying to be cheap about it. But you're not really going to be able to do this cheaply anymore. Um, you can definitely get her to a comfortable state where she can comfortably farm 8-2 with, with much less gear than this. I mean, you know, floating around that like 80 million, something like that. But in order to like actually get the defenses of what you felt last league, I, I had to go Imperial Might. I had to put on this helmet. Instead of running um, Energy Fortress, I had to run um, a uh, Precise Elemental Resistance here. But uh, there are a few good things. I mean, when you get to this, your res is actually very nice, right? Your res is nice. Your ES is nice. You have some really solid defenses um, with your um, armor, things like that, right? Like on this, I'm sitting at 50k armor, which is like some nice mitigation. Um, so that's pretty nice in regards to the memories. You are just running the, for me, I was just running freeze duration and additional damage, um, for every time an enemy's frozen because you're basically perma freezing. This works out. Um, and then for your traits here, you're just using like the max cold energy. This one, uh, you use frigid infusion for bossing for mapping. You just run frost tide still. And then, um, you use the Blooming Frost Flower and the Bone Piercing Frost. Um, this one you're getting from your memory. So the other one you just end up using Bone Piercing Frost. Um, let's go ahead and showcase the damage on the Imperial Might version, which, again, the damage is slightly lower, but um, this is with actual defenses that are not um, completely awful. So. Um, this is kind of where the build is at. Like, if you want a functional version of the build, like, I haven't really min-maxed everything yet. I mean, I guess I'm still hitting damage cap, um, after some ramp, but it does take it a little bit to kind of get there. So, um, uh, but this is a version that's actually going to be, um, very tanky. So, um, let's go ahead and showcase these skills here. So for the skills themselves, you are using an activation medium channel here. Um, this is in order to um, facilitate your activation medium instruction. You are using a star stalker here with another activation medium. We have frost terror here with an instruction. Um, I think if this were supposed to be perfect, my instruction should probably be like 0.9. Uh, 0.9 seconds to one second, something like that. Um, Obviously, if I'm using Terra, I don't need to use speed up formation, but because I'm not using the kingly armor, I do have to use this. Um, then I am running Biting Cold here for our curse, and then I just have blurry steps because I prefer to move fast. Um, for my candles, I did end up just getting a Soul Eater candle. Um, you could obviously min max this for damage and get plus one max Terra instead, um, but I got plus one max Terra on this other candle to cover that. 
For your auras, you do want to be running... Um, I highly recommend Precise Elemental Resistance just because you can't beat it defensively. Um, this league, especially with this character where you get to use Precise Concentrated because you are using Frigid Infusion. Um, Frigid Infusion kind of gets to break Precise Concentrated because... Um, it's an aura that you have on, but it's not an aura that will you that will be affecting you. So you can use these two auras here. So I have precise elemental resistance, precise deep pain with precise concentrated on it, and a frigid domain with precise concentrated on it. So we get massive um, aura effect out of our um, out of our auras here. I mean, this aura amplification we could probably even get away with running malleable on it instead. Um, just for even more damage. But I didn't really feel like it was necessary to do that. And then for your last one, if you want to min-max damage, you would probably, you would run a Thunder Spirit instead of Ice Imbue. But for um, mapping, you're just going to end up with Ice Imbue because you want the extra explosions. So that's going to be better off. Um, for the um, Slates itself and for the tree... The tree, pretty much exactly the same. You take some sealed mana. If you're not using Imperial Might, you have to take more sealed mana, of course. Um, you're taking some attack and cast speed. You don't really need to do that. If you just want to take skill area or something instead, you can. I just left these in because um, I am using the Path of Flames, so I didn't really mind it. Um, for your other tree here, again, you're just taking the ES. Take some skill area. Get your... Um, uh, I wouldn't actually get this Focus Blessing. I don't know if I still have this in the tree. I guess I just didn't bother fixing it from um, when I was uh, from when I was leveling and doing stupid stuff on it. So these would actually be moved into this cold damage here. Um, so let me go ahead and just move these now and fix it. So yeah, you just want these in the move in the cold damage, um, or you can put them in, same with like the skill area, you can put in more damage, but I like the skill area, it feels nice. Um, there's, you could always put it in ES as well if you want more defenses, it's entirely up to you. And then for the Psychic Tree, we are just doing the same thing, damage, ES, more damage, uh, more dot damage. We're getting our, um, you know, CDR here. It might be worth picking up the 15% CDR here just for Star Stalker, um, but that's personal preference. And then, of course, we're taking the Reap and the um, Affliction per second here. Um, in regards to the Slates, I went pretty expensive with the Slates, kind of. Um, I did end up just running a Kinetic Conversion Slate just for some um, additional damage uh, mitigation as well as some barrier. I found one with some Affliction effect on it, so I was happy with that. Um, I did have a Prairie that I moved over from my um, Erica. So I was just running this with three corners here with some armor stacking things with my Imperial Might. Um, in order to help with the resistances, um, just because the resistances are just so bad on the character. Um, it's so hard to get it with as many legendaries as you're using for the most part. And you're just like, you are using or you're trying to get reap and affliction effect on everything as well. So you don't have as many suffixes for resistances on your armor. So... Um, this really helps um, if you are running the armor stuff. Um, this gives me some extra armor to my barrier shield as well um, with the prairie. If you don't have the prairie, corners like this might still be good if you have Imperial Might. Um, that's up to you. I just moved over this Blessing Slate. Um, this probably shouldn't be a Blessing Slate. It should just probably be like a plus one or a plus two um, slate with some other survivability stuff on it. But this is what I had, so this is what I used. I didn't want to go too crazy deep into this i just wanted to see what what it took really to get Gemma to where she was last league and the answer is it takes a lot so um i wouldn't really recommend this as much for someone who's like actually trying to actively farm like t8-4 and things like that um the requirements for 8-4 um deep space stuff have definitely gone up um the expectation is that you have like trillions of damage if you don't have trillions of damage you'll find monsters that are just incredibly tanky um so uh yeah let's go ahead and showcase a map on it still uh we can do that i don't think i took all the beacons off this character uh i guess i did so let me go buy a beacon real fast presuming there's still money in here uh i have enough money to buy a single beacon somewhere <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that um 
Here we go. Two beacons. This will do. Um, let's grab these, and then, um, yeah, let's just go run Demiman Village as we normally do. It's always a good uh, showcase of anything. We'll showcase it in with Loot Pets, because if we're doing mapping, we're going to be doing um, Loot Pet stuff. So, um, let's showcase an 8-2 at least. Um, let's, oh, oh, I said I was going to do Demiman. Let's go back. Let's take out our compass, because I don't even know what deck is on this right now. So, put it back into Loot Pets. Let's kind of showcase what mapping looks like on this. This is, again, with the... Uh, this is with the Imperial Might version, not the cheaper version of the build that has no res. So, I mean, the mapping is smooth, right? You're getting a very smooth, you're getting very nice mapping still. 8-2 um, stuff, even on like the cheaper version of the build without like all the really expensive toys I have on here, like Imperial Might and the Prairie and everything, you'd still be doing just fine. But as you can see, like even on 8-2, you'll run into rares that are not just like instantly dying, right? They're not instantly dying to the explosions. They're not instantly dying just like when you first touch them. So um, that doesn't feel the best. Um, but I mean, the character is very tanky still. So um, it's actually okay. For the most part, it just, uh, you know, coming from something like Erica, when you can spend a fraction of the cost and uh, get more damage and basically similar defenses, it's um, it feels a little bad when you look at it that way. So... Um, but yeah, for those that were looking for the update to Gemma 2, sorry on the delay on it. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, this is what I'd recommend if you're trying to push it to that upper end. Again, you don't need the Prairie. I would recommend the Imperial Might still, though. Um, and the Precise Elemental, um, the Precise Elemental Aura. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And other than that, see you in the next one.